welcome to this chapter as we get to the later stages of this book. This chapter is about the most prominent metric of human progress, um, space exploration. And the reason it's considered the most prominent metric is, um, is our ability to explore and even occupy the rest of the cosmos beyond the Earth um, advanced enough. If there is extraterrestrial life somewhere else, what metric would they judge us by? They'd only judge us by our space exploration for the most part. They wouldn't care so much about our own um, technologies for ourselves necessarily, such as our medicine or uh, entertainment or so on. Now, one of the problems in the discussion about space exploration is some people think that the only measure of progress is whether humans are landing on other worlds and so on. And therefore, there's a belief that space exploration and indeed all human progress halted between 1969 and 1973 because humans stopped going to the moon after that period. That is absolutely not true. Uh, for one thing, humans are not the most suitable uh, beings to explore space because a human requires air and water, whereas an artificial intelligence does not require air and water. An artificial intelligence can also survive in a much wider band of temperature, pressure, gravity, and radiation than a human can. Humans require all kinds of very special conditions to enable them to even exist in space, which indicates how fragile humans are. So artificial intelligence is by far the most efficient way to explore space. There's also a safety advantage, um, a size advantage. Artificial intelligence can occupy a much smaller space than a human that needs a living capsule and that needs to contain all of its air and water and so on. So space exploration through artificial intelligence will certainly be the future. But that doesn't mean humans are entirely left behind. The atom has improved all of our instrumentation in the process. For example, until the mid-1990s, we did not know of any planets around other stars. It was only assumed that they exist, but there were no verified examples. However, as computerization went into various aspects of telescopic um, technology and so on, the precision with which we could examine the cosmos started to rise exponentially. And it is indeed exponential because now the rate of discovery of new planets around other stars, known as exoplanets, is rising in that classical parabolic curve that we see in all exponential technologies. So for this reason, the atom really is the mechanism by which to explore space and to utilize the resources of space for our benefit. I mean, asteroid mining is another very valuable area of uh, space exploration because there are literally trillions of dollars of valuable elements and minerals in nearby asteroids and if we can capture them those can be utilized on earth as well and lower the price of many expensive uh, elements here on earth for industrial and uh, commercial use so i encourage you to read this chapter and i hope you find it very inspiring to see how the rate of Space exploration never really stopped. It merely redirected into a form that more cleanly utilizes technological progress. Thank you.